Well then, the mobs are covered now, so why not discuss yet another grotto great, the Lunius Shrooms and all the land, Moon Shrooms, everyone. But hold up, Beard, don't you already have a guide on these high-inducing guys? Yup, sure do. But it's now two years old, and I not only not remember what was happening two years ago, I did say I'd start revisiting older content to make it better and faster. So then, let's get to it. After we get down into the caves and enter a favorite biome of mine once again, the Lunar Grotto. Now we've been spending a lot of time in it lately, but if you don't recall, to find it, you need to find your blue mushroom forest. And why you ask? Cause the two are always connected to one another. That's why. At least they should be. I have noticed that loot caves can get quite wonky. And speaking of wonkiness and mush trees, let's just combine the two to talk about lunar mush trees themselves. With every swing, we will be spawning things called lunar spores. And they're just like all other mushroom spores, only they'll potentially be deadly. For you see, they deal 10 damage in a decent radius around them, and chances are, we'll be dealing with multiple at once, so I think you can start to see the issue but bait out the explosions, and each tree should provide a single shroom pretty easily. And oh yes, unlike two years ago, I can confirm here today that lunar mush trees do attempt to regrow a new sapling nearby every three days come winter if there are less than five other loon trees nearby. So make notes. To continue though, another source of moon shrooms could be the walking mushrooms themselves, mush gnomes. Mush gnomes drop two moon shrooms guaranteed, and while they will occasionally be a pain to take down, I'm sure, just be patient with the spores, as gnomes actually tend to flee their own anyways, as they're super hyper passive, so you might just be able to bait out the first spin, kill them on the second one. They also respawn every day and can be potentially numerous so that's a bonus. And the last source of moon shrooms, you ask? Naked mole bat burrows. They can be even more numerous if you let mole bats do their thing as we learned just the other day. So while the individual chances at digging up a moon shroom aren't that great, you will have plenty of rolls to take if you know what I mean. But enough faffing about, let's talk the good stuff. Moon shrooms themselves and their quote unquote hidden abilities. Raw moon shrooms will restore 12 12.5 hunger and 10 sanity a munch, while cooked shrooms will do the exact opposite, which is potentially a very useful thing when dealing with enlightenment down in the grotto at the end of the day, so make notes. Thing is though, their properties extend well beyond the grotto, as eating raw moon shrooms will make us groggy for 6.6 .6 seconds or so, which is actually equal to that of a hit from a gestalt. Furthermore, stuffing our faces with two raw shrooms in quick succession will literally put us to sleep for roughly 6 seconds, which, you guessed it, is also identical to what getting hit by two gestalts does to us. But how about cooked moon shrooms beard? The opposite, I'm guessing. Yeah, kind of, I guess, but it's mostly just the canceling of all grogginess effects that should appeal here, as that is literally what they do. You get groggy, and I mean like groggy from anything out there in the game, and you eat a cooked moon shroom, you're gonna be good to go. And yes, even the 13.3 seconds of grogginess following a big bad barger yawn can be immediately negated with eating the shroom. It's good stuff. And it might only get better. Better with some cake, of course. Mushy cake is a very unique crockpot recipe requiring the raw versions of every mushroom in the game. And while it does restore 25 hunger and 10 cent each bite itself, its biggest and best draw is its ability to prevent sleep in its entirety for a full day. Not grogginess, mind you. Sleep specifically. That's not to say it won't cancel grogginess if you happen to eat a cake while groggy, but nothing, not even pan flutes or wicker bottom sleepy time stories in PvP can overpower the mushy cake ability to up our sleep resistance. So take advantage for sure. I'd still carry some cooked moon shrooms if I were you though. But before we go, one last note. Moon shrooms are also needed to craft mutated fungal turf via any celestial altar in the game. And if you are curious as to how it looks, I am literally standing on it right now. 
something that Beard didn't do two years ago because he was an idiot. And there you have it, everyone. Moon Shrooms are revisited, some new information, some better showcases, and all. That said, I also wanted to return to these guys to mention once again that it's kind of strange how we still cannot capture lunar spores with bug nets, nor can we grow more moon shrooms where we want via mushroom planters even after all this time. But maybe WX78 here is right. Perhaps we're still waiting for the fungus updates. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, shroom it up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.